What's going on internet? Welcome back to another Crown Racing Co. video. In this video, we are gonna be tearing down my 351 Windsor that was in this car. If you guys saw our last drifting video, we were at US Air for the drift event Brew City Bangers V2. Or is it V3? V3. V3. And uh, I blew the engine up while I was there. So the motor was hurt throughout the summer. I had issues with it burning oil. So we knew the motor was unhealthy. Um, so it was kind of a ticking time bomb. And well, would you know it, it finally blew up at our last drift event. So now we need to go ahead and honestly do what I think is the most fun part of engine building is actually doing the tear down to see what failed and how bad the damage is. So that is what we're gonna be doing today. So, got the engine ripped out of the Mustang already here. Since we have the engine out now, I planned on doing upgrades to make more power anyway, but I plan on replacing these cylinder heads. We're gonna upgrade to uh, some ginormous 205cc yeah. aluminum cylinder heads and it's gonna be awesome. And then of course, we'll probably change some other stuff in this configuration as well. I think, uh, cause this is the second failure I've had where I detonated these Wysco flat top pistons. And I think the reason for that is because this is an 11.1 decompression engine and I run 93 octane. Very high compression. Uh, it's pretty high compression for a gasoline engine. But um, I go, I, with talking with my coworkers and other people that have a lot of knowledge in engine building, we were at the consensus that 11 to one compression and 93 octane was okay and you can get away with it. But I think I'm starting to learn that drift, adding drifting to that combination with how much spark timing I like to run with my builds, it's not the best combination. So along with upgrading the cylinder heads, I'm also gonna bump down the compression back to 10 to one. Uh, Cause I would like to be able to use 93 octane. There's no reason I should be using race gas on a setup like this. So we're gonna bump the compression down and maybe do a couple more tricks with the valve train and we'll put it back together. But in this video, we're gonna tear it down and see what went wrong. So let's just get started. Let's get you guys thrown up on the tripod over here and me and Steve are gonna start just ripping this engine down. All right, let's do it. It's mighty fine V8 you got there. Yeah, looks good. Doesn't run very good. <laughs> Time for the main event. It is time to take the cylinder heads off. This is where we're gonna see exactly how much damage we're dealing with here. But all I gotta do is grab that Milwaukee impact 
uh, rip the cylinder head bolts off and then we should be good. Just tap the cylinder heads with a hammer. It's gonna spill coolant everywhere. It always does. Always does. Uh, if you guys build engines, you know what I'm talking about. This last step, it's like almost impossible to not spill coolant mm -hmm. everywhere. So we're gonna try not to spill coolant everywhere. Go. Heads up. Oh boy. It's coming out, Mark. So we got the cylinder heads off. And then I'll show you how I know cylinder five detonated because a piece of the piston is missing. It's pretty obvious. It's crazy how hot that it's getting in here. Yeah, look at there's a huge chunk missing. Right there, look at that. You guys can see that there's actually a gap where the gases are getting in between the piston and the piston ring. Mark's doing a terrible job at holding the light, but look at that guys. Melted a huge chunk of this piston out. Well, it's not the Wysco pistons, it's just getting really hot, right? No, it's not the Wysco pistons. So the last time I had the same exact failure two summers ago, and it was cylinder one, the front one. So now cylinder, si cylinder five failed. So it's either attributed to the dual plane intake manifold. Yeah, and those front cylinders have the longest runners so right, out of all of them. Yeah, so these would be so lat two summers ago I blew up this cylinder and now I just blew up this cylinder yeah so we went from that front cylinder to the other side now unbelievable so yeah we're gonna need to change your setup to make sure this doesn't happen anymore obviously yeah like I said earlier in the video we're gonna change the setup I'm gonna go back to 10 to 1 compression I'm gonna upgrade this the cylinder has had nothing to do with anything but uh, I'm gonna upgrade them because we while you're there, out of the park, why not? While you're there, right? Uh, but we're gonna also gonna switch to a single plane intake manifold for now on. So hopefully I don't have to worry about this fuel distribution issue that I've had throughout the life of the 351. Mm -hmm. So, well, there you go. Well, the damage looks good. This, I haven't rotated it over yet, but I can already tell you the cylinder wall is a-okay. The cylinder, the block survived. Which is good because you probably didn't have much more room to bore yeah, out so and go when, over. So when it comes to engine building and stuff, we call this the nail check. And as long as nothing really grabs your fingernail and feels like violently bad on your nail, you're most likely okay and it can just clean up with very, very little machine work. So if you feel something with your nail, then you might have to cut 10 thou over, but um, I barely feel anything with my nail. So. Just, well, there you have it. Just melted another forged aluminum piston down. So obviously, you know, the tune comes into play with this. Uh, I feel like I run a fairly safe tune and I've been running these engines for like seven years and I've never had an issue with the tunes I run until I started drifting. So either the tunes I'm running are too spicy for drifting or the dual plane manifold is hurting me with the fuel distribution. Mm -hmm. I'm not getting an even distribution of fuel to all the cylinders. Mm -hmm. So it, it could be a combination of both because this is textbook detona detonation failure, which means you're firing your spark plug too early and it's just too hot. That gas is expanding as the piston's coming up and all that heat is there the entire time the piston's coming up and coming down. So. It could be attributed to tune. I'll change my tune around to prevent this issue from next time. However, I think it's more likely attributed to the dual plane intake manifold. And then there's one more thing that I haven't really talked about with these. So these cylinder heads here, I, I wanted to do forged, I wanted to do aluminum cylinder heads back in the day. Um, but a couple of years ago, I didn't have the money to do the cylinder heads to do aluminum cylinder heads. So what I did back in the day 
is these are Windsor Junior cast iron cylinder heads and I ported them out and matched the, matched the port thighs and the flow to match an aluminum cylinder head that you would buy today off the internet, a 185cc cylinder head. So I got the flow numbers high enough to, to basically compete with the twisted wedge aluminum cylinder heads, the 185s. So I was like, well, I got these cylinder heads for cheap off Facebook Marketplace. They flow as much air as a high dollar aluminum head. I'm just gonna run these for a while. But there's one thing with cast aluminum cylinder heads that you have to be careful with. And it's this deck, this surface here is probably, it's very <coughs> thick. It's very thick. It's, we'll call it an eighth thick. And uh, when OEM companies like Ford or Chevy design a cylinder head that's cast iron, they make this surface very thin because this surface holds all of the heat. And you're relying on your coolant to dissipate that heat from this combustion chamber on the top to your water to cool it down. And when you do aftermarket cylinder heads, the surface is very thick and it normally retains heat a lot more than aluminum cylinder heads do. So on top of, uh, so I think it's a combination of cast iron cylinder heads, dual, in plate, dual intake manifold or dual plane intake manifold. And then I'm running 30 degrees ignition this time around which is pretty generous for a small block Ford. You should be able to get away with 30 degrees on 93 octane, no problem. So I think it's just a combination of all these three things coming together and drifting the car is what's doing it. So I'm gonna fix all three of those things I just mentioned. We're gonna make more power and it's gonna be, it's gonna be sweet. It's gonna be a, a definitely next level, next tier power level for the Mustang. So I'm excited. But I think that's kind of what attributed to this failure. So that's gonna be it for this video. You guys know the deal. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next video when we put this all back together.